every Mother's Day, I would pick lilacs for my mom. But in Vermont, the lilacs aren't blooming yet. But luckily, down here in New Jersey, where I am visiting for the weekend, the lilacs are in full bloom. No, we're not at Old Stonewell Farm in Vermont, but we are at the Wick Farm in Marstown, New Jersey, an old Cape Cod house that was built in 1750 by the Wick family. I've come here ever since I was a child, and it is here where I found my dreams um, just growing to live in this time period. I love the simplicity of the house, the, the farm, and the split rail fences that I could only imagine being made by hand. Part of the Wick Farm is their incredible kitchen garden. Even as a child, I was in awe with this garden. I always said to my parents, I want one just like this. Well, my brown thumb is getting a little bit greener, but it's going to take a while for me to really achieve a garden like this. And like my parents like to remind me, it'll take many hands in order to maintain such a garden. Still, I love to dream. And someday, because I know with God, all things are possible. Even this barn, I would love to see on my property in Vermont. It's just the perfect, perfect house for my, well, my someday goats. Just don't tell my husband that they're still on top of my list for my someday dreams. But on this, the first weekend in May, it's not only Mother's Day, but on the church calendar, it's known as Good Shepherd Sunday, where we get the most famous comforting psalm, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But lately I feel like I'm wanting a lot when I need to remember to turn to my shepherd who leads me and guides me in all my dreams, in all my days. So come and join me as I reconnect with those dreams and get back to listening to my Savior's voice. And I'm kind of hiding here in the barn it was the only um, um, safety I have from the rain. But this farm I used to visit a lot when I was a kid. And it is said that um, George Washington's troops, they camped here one uh, winter on the farm and the soldiers' huts are built um, up the hill um, over that way. But as a child, we used to come here a lot um, to go hiking and to visit the soldiers' huts. but. I was always enthralled with the Wick Farm. And it's small, it's hardly any windows, but as a child, I remember on a cold, rainy fall day, not a spring day, coming to the house and there was a big fire in the, the fireplace that was just blazing. And when you walked in from the cold, it just felt so warm and welcoming. And the smell of the firewood was just a homey smell that I loved. And ever since then, having an old house from that time period, it just captured my heart. So I come here to visit once again, and it reminds me how those dreams were instilled in me as a child. And I listened throughout my entire life. I listened to what was in my heart, my passions. And, and I owned several old houses throughout my life and now living in one of the oldest houses in Vermont. But the scripture that we have as, as we come closer to Pentecost in this season of Eastertide, we always come to a day that's known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And we have Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then we, we are reminded once again how Jesus says that, that he is the good shepherd and the sheep, they know his voice and they follow. And so I think about that a lot as I trip down memory lane on this cold, rainy and wet, yes, I'm soaking wet, weekend. I think a lot about listening to my shepherd's voice and what would have happened if I didn't listen to those Holy Spirit nudges? What if I disregarded the passions in my heart that give me joy, the things that I, I love? living in the 1700s, the old barns, the old houses. What if I just said, oh, that's just a dream. It can't happen. I would never have had the life I have, the twists and the turns. So you have to follow what God puts in your heart. 
And so on this Good Shepherd Sunday, I'm reminded once again that the sheep know a Good Shepherd's voice, but we need to, to listen very carefully to it. We need to sometimes look back and reconnect to our childhood dreams, what gave us joy and pleasure, and how perhaps was the spirit kind of nudging us to be who we are to be. I was at a retreat many, many years ago, and the facilitator of this retreat said, had everybody in the room close their eyes and say, um, to take us through this exercise. And the facilitator said, I want you to, to think back to your early childhood and think about what you used to pretend when you played make-believe. Um, what were you? Who were you? And I remember back then thinking, well, whenever I played make-believe, I was either a, I, I was a reporter. <laughs> I used to play reporter. And, and lo and behold, I became a reporter in my life. But I also pretended that I lived in a different time period. I, I would try to make my own fires outside. I would build my own weaving loom. I would pick, oh my gosh, I would pick goldenrod and boil it to make dye and then dye my baby clothes. So this facilitator had us think back to childhood and what is it that we used to dream of and believe and play. And then he was saying that that is oftentimes the very thing that, that the spirit was instilling in you as a young child, who you are, what you ought to be. And so I come here to the Wick Farm on this very cold, wet May day, and I am really, I'm soaking wet, it's horrible, to reconnect once again with who I am, to think back to how God has led me, and to remember that the journey isn't over, that my Good Shepherd is still calling me, and where it will lead, I'm not sure, but I know I need to pay attention to his beautiful voice. May you also pay attention to your shepherd's beautiful voice and go wherever it might lead you. I hope it doesn't um, lead you <laughs> to a place where you're soaking wet. Till then, God bless. caught me here. I was about to go back to the visitor center. I'm not expecting anyone. Yeah. I was lucky to meet park ranger Thomas Winslow, who took the time to share many a wonderful story with me. Not to be a downer, but none of the glass is original. So as only can happen, I was so excited after um, coming to you and filming at the, the stable there, the barn, and being soaking wet, as you can see, a wonderful gentleman who works here at the park. It's a national park. I saw him open up the door and he um, welcomed me into the home. This is the home that inspired my dreams of living in such a house that I do now. And I could smell the old wood. And here is the fireplace that I remembered as a little girl that fall day, the fire was was raging and I remember walking in with my dad and just, I said to my dad, I'm home, I'm home. And I had not seen the inside of this wick farm in, oh my gosh, I wanna say in 30 years, I am in my 50s. And then last time that I was here with my parents and it was opened, yeah, I was in my 20s. So to have this rainy day turn around with this, what I call a God moment, that finally, after so many years, the door is open and I get to once again walk inside and, and reconnect with that powerful feeling I had when I was a little girl that I'm home. It is just definitely a God moment, folks. And um, don't ever underestimate the power of that feeling of being home. And if you're missing that feeling, know that that if you ever want to 
be assured that you are loved and that there is a home for you. Just turn your eyes to Jesus and just remember that God is with you all the time. And yes, the Good Shepherd is always leading you. Home is wherever the Spirit leads you. Home is always in God's arms. But for me right now, as I was soaking wet and we were just about to head back to our hotel so I could dry up and then see my mom, well, home is right here, the Wick Farm for me. So I am just so excited. And yes, I'm rambling right now. So. Here's some scenes from this little old home that inspired me, this, the accidental country pastor. So think about it, folks. Where is home for you? And know that home could be anywhere. Home is where the love of God resides. I'm so excited. I already offered to buy this, but it's not for sale. So <laughs> I'll see you all back in Vermont. God bless. And after I got done filming um, that in front of the fireplace, the park ranger, Thomas Winslow, he said that he was going to be off the clock right now because he wanted to add an amen to what I said. But then he also shared with me the legendary story of Tempe Wick and the horse. Many, many different versions of Tempe and the horse. You don't mind if I film you? No, no, it's Go okay. Ahead. I'm public domain. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so tell me about Tempe. It was a temperance wick. Uh-huh. She's the only one of the wick children born here. The rest came from Long Island. They moved here from Long Island around 1750. So temperance is the only one that actually was born here. By the time of these events, the winter of 1779-80, when 10,000 troops were here, the only ones left was mother, father, and the youngest daughter. The rest had moved on. This Tempe wick and what? Age she was varies depending on the version of the right. story. Some bad soldiers mutinying or seeking horses try to get her horse. Of course, the key to the story that she's this brave, resourceful, smart American girl. Yep. And she somehow fix, fakes them out, races ahead of them back to the house here, and goes in the back door and hides it inside. It starts to get really funky. Uh -huh. Because how long and where changes to depending on the version of the story. We've had the horse stuffed into every nook and cranny of this house. Usually they say the spare bedroom over there. Uh huh. Uh, some say the attic, some say the cellar. There is a root cellar on that side. We're stuffed oh. into every possible place. And then the really yeah. interesting part, how long. Exactly, yeah. We've had from days to months to any length of time. Now a horse makes a lot of I didn't think that you'd be interested in hearing about the amount of manure that a horse can produce. So I end with thank you for coming to Old Stonewell Farm here in Marstown, New Jersey. We'll be back in Vermont next week. And mom, here are your Mother's Day lilacs. One last thing that I learned from the park ranger, the Wick family was indeed Presbyterian. Savior like a shepherd lead us much we need thy tender care in thy pleasant pastures feed us for our use thy folds prepare blessed jesus blessed Thy we are. Blessed Jesus.